stop crying about the 52 set study. Please, enough. 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 Enough with the coping and seething about that study. I have personally have had it. Now, allow me to throw some disclaimers. One, amazing job by the researchers on carrying out that study. It was a really well done study and a study that um, contributed greatly to the current literature. Two, I have no uh, official affiliation with the authors of the study, nor have I collaborated on the paper in any sort of way. Three, my personal bias is, if anything, that, you know, I would love for lower volumes to be better than higher volumes and for us to be able to maximize our bird free with just, you know, sub 10 sets, ideally. And for, for those of you that don't know, in the evidence-based lifting community, aka the toxic cesspool that is that community, I literally spat while saying it. Freudian slip, maybe, I don't know. We've been having this in, in unnecessarily intense sort of discussion, discussion, debates, not, not really much debating going on. There's been this overreaction about a study that recently came out. For those of you that don't know that study by Enes et al, you can find the link in the bio, essentially looked at three different groups of trained individuals who performed the squat leg press and leg extension for their quads. And over the period of 12 weeks, one group stayed at 22 sets for their quads per week, split in two sessions, two training sessions. The other two groups essentially added sets, added four or six sets and progressed and essentially increased their volume by quite a bit. And the highest volume group at the end of the study reached for two weeks, they did 52 sets of quad training. Now, that was the study. What the study found was that all groups made substantial muscle hypertrophy gains, and there was no statistical significance between the group that performed the 52 sets and the other groups. But if you look closely at the results, you can see that the group that did more also gained more and did not lose muscle or overtrain or whatever. If we look at dropouts in the study, the lowest dropouts were in the highest volume group. Not that that gives us a definitive answer to anything, but still worth noting. If we look at strength results, the group that did more volume gained substantially more strength, uh, something that everybody has chosen to ignore or complete this sleep on the site for some reason. A lot of people lost their minds over that study even being conducted as if it's a bad thing to look at extremes. Now, keep in mind that these individuals just trained their quads with 52 sets for the last two weeks. On average, they did about 37 sets of quad training per week. If you care about a proper deep dive in the literature around training volume, uh, we released seven hours worth of podcasting with multiple citations and a lot of uh, insight in the history of training volume research, go ahead and check out the Stronger by Science podcast um, and specifically the episodes Extreme Volumes, Extreme Gains, question mark, part one and part two for an absolute deep dive. Now, what has annoyed me the most, aside from people questioning whether the study was legit, because that's a big accusation to make, and also acting as if having that study is a bad thing, acting as if those researchers contributing to the current literature with an extreme study is a bad thing as if we don't have multiple studies in many other fields that are proof of concept studies or whatever that look at extreme things nobody lost their minds over that study that took people and had them stretch their calves uh what, what was it like seven hours a week at a nine out of ten intensity um so daily but aside from that what has annoyed me personally the most is that people have literally argued and have made videos and reaction over something nobody has said. On the back of that study, there was nobody that said, okay, there's this study. Now we're going to take the results of the study and we're going to prescribe 52 sets for everybody out there or 37 sets without considering their previous training volume, their preferences, their recovery capabilities, or whatever nobody nobody came out and said okay this study is now has now changed my volume recommendations and i'm going to shift to much more extreme training volumes for everybody no matter their circumstances there's no greater conspiracy theory here even if you were to listen to podcasts with myself milo and dr brad schoenfeld going over that study of the results the practical 
takeaways from that study are at best, hey, if you want to do more for a certain muscle group, the current literature shows that you're not gonna lose muscle and you're not gonna randomly overtrain. And in some cases, you may actually be able to make more gains. So if you're working with an individual or with yourself and you have that one muscle group that it does not seem to grow no matter what, and you've been doing, you know, 10 to 20 sets per muscle group for that muscle group per week, you may be able to do 20 to 30 sets or maybe even a bit more and potentially make that educated bet and potentially make some more gains. Not that we all need to be doing more and more and more or that there is a new volume range that everybody should be following for each muscle group simultaneously. Phone out because the extreme reaction that this study received, I think somewhat came off the back of a meme file uh, and I made and collaborated with on Instagram with Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, where we're essentially, I'll show it on the screen, on, on as a title we have, John Bolu is a myth, question mark, exclamation mark, on the side, on the side. We have a bunch of soy jacks saying, no, you're doing too many sets. A picture of Mike Menser, you're actually going to lose muscle and have an article that says jump volume is hurting your gaze. And on the right side, you have a chat that telling you, relax, even 30 plus sets increases muscle growth, which is a fact. 30 plus sets does increase muscle growth. Now, whether that's more than 20 sets, whether that's okay for everybody, that is a different question. But the point of that meme was that, hey, you're not going to suddenly overtrain or lose muscle, even if you push past 30 sets for a muscle group per week, obviously while not ignoring your body telling you, hey, I am clearly overreaching here. You're extremely sore, you're losing sleep and you're in pain every day, stop doing 30 plus sets per week. Obviously that's not implied. Let's read the caption that spurred a lot of this controversy. Now, new study doing 37 weekly sets leads to more muscle growth than 20 weekly sets? Question mark. Based on this study, probably. It's worth noting that the best strength gains occurred in the high volume 37 weekly sets group. Additionally, while hypertrophy outcomes were most favorable in the high volume group, differences were not significant. That said, the magnitude of difference was not worthy and likely of practical significance, as you can see on the screen. A few notes to contextualize these findings. Participants were trained males with an average squat of 1RM of about 140 kg. They took at least two minutes of rest between sets and sets were taken to two or zero RIR. Now, the text says, approximately two RIR, which may be a limitation. Additionally, volume was split across two weekly sessions, meaning per session volume for the quad was on average 11 versus 16 versus 19 sets. Now, you could ignore the findings, say, well, the difference in hypertrophy weren't statistically significant. While it can be argued whether that's a good view, is a statistically a significant p-value of 0.051 really all that different from a significant p-value of 0.049? We must view these findings in light uh, of other research on very high volumes. When you zoom out, you see that this finding is not isolated. Most of the other studies we were able to find found generally better hypertrophy when performing over 25 to 30 sets versus less than with 20 weekly sets per muscle group and three studies with pure null findings, usually with smaller volume differences between groups. But here are some implications. First, don't worry too much about junk volume. The upper limit of productive per session and weekly volume is likely higher than we thought. You may see more girls doing over 30 sets uh, per week per muscle group than doing 10 to 20. Likewise, you can likely get up to 15 or more sets in a session and continue to see additional growth versus limiting it to 10. Finally, this may lead uh, create credence to stressization phases with higher volumes. Training all muscle groups with this much volume may be challenging in terms of both time investment and overall recovery. Now, that was the meme that essentially started a bunch of controversy and people were arguing against the idea that you have to suddenly perform so much more training volume and that you should start at these extreme volumes. This was another piece of the volume puzzle. As it stands, there seems to be a dose response relationship between training volume and hypertrophy without that meaning should be starting at 30 sets per muscle group per week. Everybody, including those accused of a high volume bias, are still recommending 10 plus sets per week, 10 to 20 sets per muscle group if you want to make every educated that you can on maximizing hypertrophy. That doesn't mean that four sets per muscle group per week won't get you gains, it doesn't mean that everybody will be able to respond the same way to 30 plus sets, but on average and 
factoring in the all the assumptions that I have mentioned. If you can tolerate more volume and you want to tell yourself that, okay, I'm doing everything in my capability to absolutely maximize hypertrophy, then there are some cases where you could go and do 30 sets for a given muscle group per week. What annoys me the most is that people were and are still arguing in something nobody really said. Nobody said that, hey, this is the new standard. This is the new volume recommendation. Our reaction was like, oh, now people are going to start recommending 52 sets per week. That's way too much. Ha ha ha. And the study came out, we read it, thought, oh, cool. Actually, that upper threshold may be higher than we thought. Cool. Another piece of the puzzle. Recommendations don't change. But for that one client who really wants their calves to be bigger and they've been doing 25 sets per week for their calves, now maybe they can do 35 sets. And a worst case scenario, they won't lose gains and they're going to make the same gains as they would with 25 sets. But there's a chance they may make some additional gains. Keep in mind that just because there are certain studies that do show that extreme training volumes may actually lead to more growth, you shouldn't take that and just run with that as your default approach to training volume. I would even recommend people start a bit lower, start at the you know six to 10 sets per muscle group per week, build from there. Obviously, judging whether you're making progress or not is very difficult after a specific point in your lifting career. If you're 10 years deep, you won't really know if something is really working unless you're that one guy that is, you know, getting an ultrasound measurement every few weeks and you're controlling for literally every variable in your life. But even then, you won't know if what you're doing works better or worse than something else that you could be doing. All that to say, don't lose your mind over what people are saying about the study and how it's presented. There's no high volume conspiracy. Nobody's telling you that you're not going to be making amazing gains with a few sets per week. Even those that are accused of being biased towards high volumes will tell you, even in the papers that are usually criticized, that a few sets per week are going to lead to significant gains. And that if you want more, going above 10 sets per muscle group per week is probably a good idea and is likely to get you more gains. That said, enough with the crying about that study, enough with the random accusations. Some also pointed towards the authors of the study or the exercise science field. Stop coping, stop seething. It's another small piece of the puzzle. Let it rest. Let's please move on. And for those of you watching that were caught in the crossfire, nothing has really changed as far as volume recommendations go. Exercise science is not lost. Things are not, uh, they're not worse than they were back in the day. It's not like they're doing these crazy studies. Now, whoever says that does not really understand science. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And the next time you hear somebody cry about the study and complain about the state of exercise science, slap them and then deal with the consequences yourself. This is not a channel that advises you to be actually physically causing harm to people. It was all just a joke. Here's your disclaimer. You thought you could sue me. You're not going to sue me. This is not medical advice. This is not legal advice. This is not by any means any actual serious advice for entertainment purposes only as they say in front of every rap video clip where they actively talk about actual cases of people dying. So thank you for watching. Nice try. Matrix, we're still out here. Peace.